So welcome back to Physics of Music. And I want to carry on from last time by talking about periodic or repeating patterns that happen in music. And I want to talk about this specific piece of music, which is the very, very famous theme, the Ode to Joy theme in Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And I've shown a very simplified version of that here. So maybe before watching the rest of this video, why don't you go and have a listen to the Chicago Symphony Orchestra version of this. This is linked in the description below and I tell you what time to listen at to hear this particular theme. And then you can come back. Okay. And so, you know, if you're just watching this video, and you just want to hear the simplified version, what I'm going to do is, is play that on the recorder. This is my recorder from the third grade. And so here it goes. And so we want to think about as we're listening, are there periodic things happening? And are there multiple periodic things happening either in the rhythm or in the melody or in the shape of the melody? And so see how many you can spot. Okay, so let's talk about some of the periodic things that happened there. And probably you got some, some of them. See how many of these things that you, you picked up on. Well, first, before we think about the notes that I played, let's actually just think about the rhythm of the tune. And so basically, we had a note happening almost every beat during that song. And so the rhythm was almost perfectly periodic. Bum, 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 bum. The only difference in rhythm throughout the song was uh, the half note at the very end of each set of four measures. And so the full rhythm had a period that lasted, a, that, that perfectly repeated in this simplified version, at least every four measures. Okay. And that, that, Full rhythm was one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So, so that was uh, repeated four times during the whole song. Another slightly more subtle point is that when I played this, or when it's usually played there would typically be a slight emphasis on the note at the start of each measure. And so if, if you listen carefully, it would be a little bit like this. I was emphasizing a little bit more there, um, but that's, that's something that uh, is very, it's, it's subtle, but present in many kinds of music, this emphasis on the first note of each measure. So now let's talk about the specific notes that are present in this melody. And what you notice, even if you don't know anything about music or you didn't hear the song, you could just look at the musical notation and see some repetitive patterns in the shape. It goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. So there's something that seems to almost repeat uh, four times there. Um, and then, well, this one looks a little bit different, the third line here, and then you have this up, down, up, down pattern again. And so there's something in this case with a two measure or four beat, uh, or sorry, eight beat um, period that repeats several times throughout the song. Um, in terms of the notes, the specific notes, you see that this set of notes, this set of eight notes, is exactly the same as that set of eight notes and this set of eight notes. And so that's something that's repeating. And then these ones here 
Um, and these ones here, at least the first four here um, are the same as the first four there and the same as the four notes here. Um, and uh, again, the the shape or the where these notes are relative to each other, that's sort of very similar here as compared to here. Okay. And then if you look at the third line, there's actually a repeating theme as well. So if you just ignore the second note here of, of this bar and this bar, then the other ones are the same. Bum, 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 bum. And so it's interesting then if I kind of take this piece of music and strip it down and just play the specific things that I mentioned that we're repeating, then you'll see really how periodic this whole thing is. Uh, so let me do that. So I played more than half of the notes in that song, and it was really just one thing that happened six times and another thing that happened three times, and those things were very simple uh, sets of notes. And so in terms of the basic structure of this piece, it's built out of simple repeating patterns, and yet it is one of the most memorable themes in all of, um, well, certainly all of Western classical music. So just a, a, another thing to point out is that we don't necessarily want to have as much repetition as possible. So in, in constructing an interesting piece of music, um, not only the repetitions or the, the periodic events, um, the, it's not just that that's important, it's some variation from being exactly periodic. And so, for example, I've noted here just a couple of examples where you have something almost periodic, but then it's a little bit different. This one is a little bit different than the rest. And then in the, in the rhythm, in the real version, the rhythm is slightly different than, than the one I've made here. And so it seems that what makes music interesting is combination of periodic patterns and then variations um, or differences from that periodicity. Okay. But you don't want to go to the other extreme of having absolutely no periodic, um, nothing periodic in either the rhythm or the melody. Uh, if you want an interesting example of that, you can have a look at this video, uh, I, which I found recommended to me on YouTube. And this is something where mathematicians tried to construct a musical piece with absolutely nothing periodic, absolutely no repeating patterns. And so you could hear what that sounds like. 